Good morning, Covenant County. Welcome to Good News Covenant County with Brother John and Cousin Jared here. Coming to you live from the Courthouse Square here in Andalusia, Alabama. Welcome aboard, folks, in Op. Welcome aboard, folks, in Red Level, Loango, Samford, Pleasant Home, Carolina, Gant, Dunn's Bridge, any place in the county that hears. We're glad to have you on board with us and wishing you to have a great day today. Boy, howdy, was that a short spring we had or what? I woke up this morning and I checked the thermometer and uh, it was 38 degrees. It was uh, cold as an ex-girlfriend's heart out there. And uh, fortunately it's gonna warm up today. We're gonna have better weather, but uh, it, was a, it was a cold night last night. At three o'clock when I got up to let my cat out, I opened the door and the cat stuck his face in the open door, took one look and ran back in the house and looked at me like I was stupid for standing there. So it, it was a short spring we had, but it's gonna get better. Big news last night, uh, if you watch TV, and I didn't watch much of it, uh, the uh, uh, James Comey interview was uh, with George Papadopoulos was on, and. Uh, that's led to a Twitter war already this morning uh, as uh, President Trump and Mr. Comey uh, give their different assessments of the other person's personality, abilities, and uh, moral timber. I'm not getting involved in it, thank you. Uh, with all my mistakes, I don't think I'm as flawed as either one of them. Uh, and then uh, they had the, uh, the Country Music Awards last night on, and I didn't watch that, but my wife did. And... Uh, seemed pretty interesting. I, I, I did see the last song. It was about being rednecks and identified heavily with it. Uh, I noticed that it was the first time that uh, Casey Underwood, I believe that's her name, uh, came out and has sung since she had an accident and uh, broke her hand or wrist or something like that. I, I cannot look at her and not think of, uh, with her name and everything, think of her as Casey Under Underwear. Uh, because she wears provocative clothes sometimes. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're glad to, uh, that, that all went well. I guess the saddest news I have to report this morning is the condition of uh, a former uh, President George H.W. Bush's wife, Barbara. Uh, her health is, uh, is failing at the age of 92. Uh, she has asked that uh, they no longer uh, take her to the hospital as she gets sick with the uh, the respiratory problems that she has. What a wonderful lady. Uh, when we were living in Mariana, Florida, she came and uh, did a wonderful program uh, at the school that my two sons were at. Uh, and, and just an absolutely uh, humble person. Don't make a big deal out of me, and she meant it. Uh, hate, to, hate to hear that she's not doing well. And of course, President George H.W. Bush is also suffering from Parkinson's disease at this time. They're, they're getting older, but uh, you hate to see nice people get sick. Uh, the other news was uh, the Friday night special in, uh, in Syria as uh, they had some real fireworks from the French, uh, the English, and the American armed forces as they uh, efforted to uh, destroy the uh, biological weapons programs uh, that Syria is apparently, according to the press, used on their own people. Uh, when you got a couple of boys that are in the army or something like that, you always cringe when you hear that kind of thing. I'm not taking a side on it, but uh, it's one of those times where you think, gosh, we got a lot to be thankful for with our men and women in the army, and the navy, the marines, the air force, and even the coast guard that uh, do so much to make sure that we leave a, lead a life that's unimpeded by danger and those kind of things. Tell somebody that you know that's in the military, thanks. They're one reason our life's so nice. I guess the other big news for the weekend was the Relay for Life that was held. Big event, big fundraiser. They raised over $50,000 uh, to fight cancer in our local area. Uh, had eight great teams that went out and walked. Thank you for the teams that went and walked and for the people that sponsored them and will pay them by the foot of the mile or whatever that they're paid by. It's a wonderful program and does an awful lot of good here in the community. 
hats off to the Relay for Life people. Uh, our last news of this segment is something everybody tells me they look forward to, and that's the buzzard report. Now, I got up here early this morning. I went out over to Magnolia Cemetery. There were no buzzards there. There were no buzzards on top of the courthouse or even on top of the old First National Bank building. But I can promise you, over around 8th Street, there were plenty of buzzards, and I don't know what they were looking for, but there were about 17 of them flying at that time, taking advantage of those good old thermals over there. Andalusia and its buzzards live on. Well, we're going to take a break here after that recount of the news. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to Good News, Kevin and County. Well, folks, as you know, most of our, or a lot of our news comes from the Andalusia Star News. We want to give them proper attribution for everything that we, uh, that we use from them. They're good people. They have a fine small town paper, and in my opinion, they do a good job of finding events uh, and, and making news uh, in, a, in a place where people, a lot of folks say nothing's happening in Andalusia. Well, all you got to do is go to the Andalusia Star News or the Op News and read it, and you'll find out there's a lot going on in these communities. One of the things that went on this uh, past weekend was a, uh, a, a better community health uh, uh, event that was held at the uh, Central Church of Christ. Uh, there's an article by Lacey Stinson in the paper uh, regarding that, and uh, uh, over 200 people attended the event. It sounds like it was very well organized. I didn't get to go. Uh, but Carmen Cooper uh, organized it, and uh, she's a member of the Central Church of Christ, and she got the idea from other health uh, resource fairs that she had been to, particularly one in Lowndes County. Uh, they had one at the health department up there, and it influenced her to think about having one here in Covenant County, and uh, I think it's a good thing that they've done. They wanted to let the people know what the resources available to them in the community are. You know, there's a lot of resources here in Covenant County that we don't know about that are available to us many of them for free, and that's what she was trying to do. She said, I felt like a lot of people had no idea what their community offers to them, and this kind of help, this kind of event can help them see that. Uh, for a first event, she felt like it was a real success. They had over 200 people walk through uh, throughout the day, and they had lots of vendors. It went smoothly, no hitches, and uh, I hear that they're going to have another one next year. Uh, there was a lot to offer. The Lions Club had free sight tests. Folks, if you got any spare glasses, keep them around and give them to a line sometime. They do an awful lot of, of good things for people that have problems with their sight. Uh, they had a free sight testing at their booth. The Army Veterans Affairs people were there. They had a, uh, they had a bus out. The United States Army was there. I saw that trailer go by with a number of games and that kind of thing to keep people occupied. And uh, Homeland Security even had a speaker there. So uh, I think that was a very, very positive event. There were 15 vendors that participated in this event, including uh, Andalusia Motor Company, uh, Manor rather, the Social Security, the Comfort uh, Care Hospice, United States Army, the Lions Club, Andalusia Health Department, uh, the Alabama Department of Homeland Security, Department of Veterans Affairs, Alabama Extension Service, uh, and uh, the Alabama Security Commission. They had free hot dogs, uh, chips, and drinks. The sponsors were Dean's Cake House, Power South, Comfort Care Hospice, Southeast Alabama Gas District, Wiregrass Federal Credit Union, Union Alabama Extension, Covington County Bank, Walmart, Lions Club, Children's Policy Council, and Pat's Creation. That's a, kind of a great way to bring us into something else that happened this weekend. On Friday, we had the Blue Ribbon Day. Now, if you'll watch, you'll see our actual coverage of some of that. You know, there'll be an interview with uh, several of the people that are involved in the Blue Ribbon event. Uh, and uh, on our station, as we put them on a delayed broadcast, please take the time, because that's a worthwhile event for every kid in this county. Uh, and uh, we're proud that we've got uh, people like Walt Merrill and uh, the other folks that we 
met over there that are working hard to be advocates for the children in our community. Uh, also, coming up this Thursday, I can't wait for this because it's always a fun deal, is the Andalusia, the Luncheon Pilots Club is going to have their annual sandwich, uh, annual picnic on the square uh, event from 11 until 1 p.m. That's on Thursday, April 19th. Uh, they'll have your choice of sandwiches up there. They come with a bag of chips, a drink, and a dessert. Uh, it's gonna be a nice thing. This is a major fundraiser for them. It, uh, it'll only cost you $7 and you get a meal out of it. And uh, I've, blown, I've blown $7 on potato chips and Coca-Colas. Uh, and, and not had anything like this. They'll have, I believe it's ham and chicken salad and, and uh, uh, pimento cheese and cheese sandwiches up there available to you. As I say, they'll all be in sack lunches. Uh, you can eat it on the square. You can take it with you. Now, if you're willing to let them know by the end of the day, Monday, uh, they'll actually deliver that sandwich to you. How's that for a deal? That's uh, just something to think about. Uh, the uh, Hattie Lawson is kind of heading it up uh, here, and the Pilots Club does a lot in the community. There, there's a, two groups, two different pilot clubs. They help them raise funds because it, it's all local. It all stays here. Now we're going to stop again for a break, and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back to Good News Covenant County with Brother John and Cousin Jerry. As I mentioned in the last segment, uh, we talked about the Blue Ribbon event uh, that they had on the square here Friday. What a great event. It had a big turnout. Several hundred people, a bunch of beautiful children came up to sing and share a message with us, and there were messages given to us by a number of different people. Now, what's the Blue Ribbon event about? Well, the Blue Ribbon event is all about stopping child abuse. It's a problem in our county. It's a problem in our city. It's a nationwide problem. I cannot think of anything in the world that is more precious and innocent and susceptible to being taken advantage of than a child. And unfortunately, there's an awful lot of it that goes on here. Uh, the uh, Child Abuse Awareness Month uh, is, is put on by the Covington County Child Advocacy Center. Uh, and the director of that fund is Casey Perry. We interviewed her, and please, as I said earlier, take the time to watch that. Casey's a very dedicated public servant. Child abuse is a problem here in Covington County. It's a problem, even if it doesn't touch you, it's a problem for the people around you. <coughs> it's intergenerational. So if you have a situation where the parents abuse a child, the chances are that that child will abuse their children. That means that we can stop it with the proper actions, proper therapy, and proper training. Let's stop this one thing. It's not cancer, but it's a, it's a bad thing that we can help stop just by being better people. Uh, while we were there, the, uh, uh, we learned things from Casey, like the, the, the main purpose of the CCCA is to help heal these children that go through these uh, traumatic events and, and, and to make them whole. Uh, the first time this became a, a, an object, to, I mean, I guess an object to, for attention from anybody was when President John Kennedy was uh, in office. And they did some work with the Department of Justice. And back in 1962, they, had, they found 500,000 cases in a much smaller United States population at that time. <coughs> it became a, uh, an initiative for the United States. Locally, in addition to Casey Perry and the CCCA, uh, our good friend, uh, the district attorney, Walt Merrill, has been extremely active in this. And Walt gave an impassioned speech uh, and, and told some anecdotes uh, that, were, that were, were extremely moving. We were able to capture some of that speech uh, and then we had an interview with Walt Merrill as well. I think you'll find that real revealing. There's a need for us to watch out for each other in this community. And this is one of those things that points it out so well. Uh, as Walt Merrill said, 
I'm here today to tell you that evil does exist. Uh, society has been has used, uh, he talks about three monkeys that hear no evil, speak no evil, and uh, uh, hear, speak, and see no evil. Uh, well, it's around us. We've got to attenuate our, our senses and hear, speak, and when we see evil, we need to report it. Uh, there are 112 charges of child abuse in Covington County last year. <clears throat> that was about 165 children. Uh, they did nearly 80 forensic interviews with these children. Uh, and, and they've got a very specialized staff there that's trained to interview these children without causing an awful lot of problems for the child, without making them feel stigmatized, making them instead feel comfortable with what they're dealing with. <coughs> we, we talk about that kind of thing all the time, but uh, we hardly ever uh, we hardly ever involve ourselves in it, I guess, because it's easy. Don't let a child be abused. Don't let this ongoing spiral continue. Get involved. Call the Covington County Child Advocacy Group or call Walt Merrill's office. They'll do their best to protect that child, and they'll protect you in the process, too. We're going to take a break now and be back shortly. Welcome back to Good News Coming in Kent. Uh, I saw an article in today's uh, Andalusia Star. Well, actually, it was a Saturday Andalusia Star news written by Christopher Smith. Christopher, I, we didn't get to introduce ourselves uh, Friday, but uh, he's a really good, good author, good writer. And he wrote, uh, when I first saw it, I thought they were talking about canoeing in Covenant County. But they, they weren't. The title was uh, Paddling is Rarely Used. <coughs> Excuse me. And it was an article about uh, paddling being used in the school systems in Andalusia and Covington County. Covington County schools rank second in the state of Alabama in the number of paddlings administered in the school system in the 2015-2016 year. Now, that was a... Uh, information garnered from federal reports. And one thing we don't realize, if our schools take federal money, they have to report on a lot of different things, and that was what they reported on. While paddling is legal in Alabama, uh, the, the, uh, it's only supposed to be administered correctly. Uh, Shannon Driver said he doubts the county's numbers uh, are nearly as high as, as they seem to present. According to the federal reporting, the Covenant County school system recorded 820 paddlings in the 2015-2016 school year. According to the John J. Anecdotal News, they missed a few. Uh, anyway, that's, that was interesting. Uh, now, on to today's weather. Uh, as of 7 a.m. I mentioned this morning, it was 38 degrees out there. And uh, a lot colder than I thought it would be. Uh, today, as you can probably see already, our forecast calls for sunny weather, a high near 67 degrees, uh, and a northwest wind from 5 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, tonight, it's going to be clear. Again, the same breeze, low around 40 degrees uh, with a northwest wind, uh, becoming very calm this evening. Tomorrow, Tuesday, Going to be clear with a high near 78, winds 5 to 10 miles per hour out of the west. Tuesday night, mostly clear with a low around 54, so it's going to be warmer. Um, and the southwest wind about 5 miles per hour. Just a couple of things that are interesting about today. <clears throat> I don't know how many of you are, are Bible students, but it's believed that on this day in 1457, the Battle of Megiddo, uh, occurred uh, when a Canaanite coalition uh, under King Kaddish uh, had a large battle that was recorded in uh, what is supposed to be uh, a, a ended up being a, 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 a ritualistic, well, mass suicide rather than to knuckle under the, 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 the remaining Jewish people uh, uh, didn't knuckle under, and then in AD 73, Masada, which was a uh, 
a big fort, well, not a big fortress, it was a walled uh, fortress, uh, fell uh, to the Romans. It's an interesting story how they thought they had a place that couldn't be defeated, and the Roman army built ramps and parapets from the valley all the way up to the fort. Uh, and when they realized that they were going to die, all the population uh, killed themselves rather than uh, knuckle under to the uh, to the Romans. And in 1746, uh, the Battle of Culloden was fought, uh, where the French supported Jacobites and the British uh, Hanoverian forces, commanded by William Augustus, Duke of Cumberland, and Scotland fought. And uh, if you're interested in that, that has an awful lot to do with uh, uh, the movie that Mel Gibson was in uh, about Scotland and uh, Robert the Bruce and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, several wars, several battles in the Civil War fought on this day. Uh, Vicksburg was the first time Vicksburg in Mississippi was assaulted by gunboats on this day. and. Uh, it began a siege that lasted until July 4th, 1863, when the city finally capitulated. Uh, and for over 100 years, the city of Vicksburg refused to celebrate July 4th uh, as Independence Day because of that. It's kind of interesting. Bat Masterson fought his last gun battle on this day in Dodge City, Kansas. And uh, in 1912, Harriet Quimby became the first woman to fly across the English Channel. Uh, in 1943, Albert Hoffman accidentally discovered the hallucinogenic, all right, you could have hallucinations. Uh, while he was doing research on the drug LSD, uh, he intentionally Took the dose three takes the drug three days later on August 19th for the first human consumption. Uh, one other thing, uh, I need the, the term in 1947, Cold War was used by for the first time on this day. And then there's I always mention this one because you ever heard of the Charge of the Light Brigade? You know we've. Uh, it's a famous passage of music. Da 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 da. That's uh, anyway. Uh, the the leader of the charge of light the light brigade, uh, George Bingham, third Earl of Lucan, uh, was the guy that led that charge, and he is pretty well known throughout history as a complete idiot. Uh, and and so the third Earl of Lucan, and you should really read this because it's almost comic book. Some of the things that he did. Uh, the third <coughs> Earl of Lucan was born on this day. I can't say there was much anything that happened on this day uh, in Andalusia, but I do know in 2007 this was a, is the anniversary of the Virginia Tech shooting where same Hugh Cho gunned down, gunned down 32 people and injured 17 more before committing suicide. Folks, we're about to draw it to an end here been glad to have you on board. Wish we'd had more good news. We're going to try to dig a little bit more of that out for tomorrow. Thank you for watching today and thank you for watching every day. Look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.